one grouping of, of these militant integrationists are people who uh, sound like they Africans, sound like they pro black, but when you really get in there and start listening to what they're saying, they're not really talking about nothing deep or, or, or long term. Um, so let's juxtapose before we go into a sort of definition of militant integrationalists. I want to read the height of the typology within Censored by Baruti's book on page 47. This is where all of us should be striving toward. There's probably a small group of folks who are actually there right now, so let's not all say, ooh, yeah, that's, I'm already there. I think it would probably be closer to say we are moving and striving towards that goal. African warrior scholars. This group of dedicated, uncompromising, frontline elders, Jagnock and Asafo, are staunch revolutionaries who are fighting for the liberation of African people. We recognize that we are our ancestors. Further, we are clearly conscious, so we have no reason to question our being at war for the remembrance, elevation, empowerment, and sovereign liberation of African people. These indefatigable warriors thrive on a strict intellectual diet of proven liberating ideologies, methodologies, and exercises, always in a state of preparedness, always ready for any exigency. Our work is conditioned by the situation. Nonetheless, whatever the situation may be, first and foremost, we turn to the lessons left us by our ancestors for operational instruction for any given situation. Our vision of a whole African people determines the strategies and tactics which will consistently, correctly guide us along the African way in any given circumstance, whatever the condition, whoever the enemy, however few or many our numbers. We are the workers in our centers. So that's African Warrior Scholar. That's where I'm striving towards and and, and Holip striving for and Master Sar striving for. That's where we're going. That's where we hope to be. Militant integrationalists, however, ain't really down for that. Militant integrationalists have enough information to know that they are not being taken care of by America. So they at least question what's going on. However, the military integrationist does not have enough relevant knowledge about America, its creation, its purpose, and stolen African sole purpose for being here. Nor does the military integrationist have enough real knowledge about Africa and how to use her wisdom for present-day solutions to really be effectual in the long term. <clears throat> They still have faith in America while having no faith in Africa. Let me repeat that. They still have faith in America while having no faith in Africa. By not knowing and or not fully reading and or not applying the wisdom of Ani, Okoto, Cambon, and Nobles regarding their research into our African identity, Marimba Ani, Baba Ajay, and Mama Kuya Koto, um, Dr. Kobe Cambon, and Baba Wade Nobles. They have done excellent, excellent research in dealing with the fact that we are Africans no matter where we are in the world. And usually when you talk to these militant integrationists, either they don't know those four people or they have their books but never read those people. So the militant integrationalist has not fully made the break from America, American values, American ideals, nor the American identity. To put it point blankly, we are stolen Africans who reside in America. The militant integrationalist does not want to accept this reality, and however loudly, however loosely wrapped in kente cloth their rhetoric may be, 
They have not divorced themselves from America. Subsequently, all of their ideas, all of the military integrationist ideas are still within Caucasoid reality. Now, this also leads the military integrationists to try to wrap Caucasoid ideas in any loose and fragmented African information they may have. Because remember, I'm going going back and forth. There's like two subgroups within the military integration. The ones who talk a whole bunch of pro-black, Afrocentric stuff, but it's surface-level stuff. They're not dealing with nation building. Then you've got the other ilk who don't want to have nothing to do with Africa stuff. And so we're going to address them in a minute. So, so this group may have some information, but it's loose and it's fragmented. They are trying to force the Caucasoid conceived idea. Hear that? Caucasoid conceived idea of socialism into an African reality. Trying to force the Caucasoid ways of governance to fit their vague notions of African sensibility. The militant integrationalist is adept at using black sounding rhetoric which disarms most within our camps from listening closely and critically. But when one does, you find they are the flip side of the more quiet, passive integrationists, loud and demanding, but still only of inclusion in and a more comfortable existence in a foreign reality. Now, you can spot a militant integrationist by listening closely to their words and rhetoric. If they are anti-African, listen to how they question and demean any African knowledge. Or listen to how their pseudo-solutions only rally around a cause or an issue. A militant integrationist isn't usually in the nation-building camps. But if one is masquerading, listen for their American influence Caucasoid value-based pseudo-solutions regarding how to create a nation. If you want a, an exact example of this, um, Mr. Holip did a uh, like a panel or a symposium on on creating a nation, on on you know ideas of nation building, and and I, I some of those responses. With this analysis become crystal clear What was going on there Folks did not have any Information about Any African political systems About any African economic systems Basically three out of the four Callers there All they knew was America And they just wanted to paint it black I'm sorry that's not going to get us anywhere Now If they only want to blacken up And essentially Caucasoid conceived nation Chances are You have stumbled upon a militant Integrationist Now outside of the African nation building discussions You can spot an MI A militant integrationist Who is loudly trying to get Caucasoids To change small Inconsequential aspects of their reality To suit stolen African They never call the Entire Caucasoid system into question They just Demand A black space in it Instead of using one's energy to create Employment They will demand Caucasoids Hire stolen Africans No matter the name or hairstyle Instead of using one's energy to create African centered style communities The military integrationists Will demand Caucasoids Stop harassing stolen Africans Whatever they are doing Right or wrong This 30 minutes sucks We've already stated That most military integrationists Have no nation building concept Outside of only making America A better place So a lot, not all But a lot of military integrationists Are cause or issue focused and they attempt to drain all people's energies and resources into causes and issues solely. What this subgroup of militant integrationists do not understand, 
please hear this, is that if their particular issue or cause, be it police brutality, domestic violence, bad health, violence, infant mortality, political prisoners, whatever, if this singular issue is solved completely, will that end stolen Africans' suffering? If this cause is solved, will Africans be able to house, close, medicate, educate, and defend themselves? I'm going to go back. I, I see the time is dwindling down, but that this is a key in how to spot some militant integrationists. So I'm going to go back. A lot, but not all, militant integrationists are cause or issue focused, and they attempt to drain all people's energies and resources into causes and issues solely. What this subgroup of MIs do not understand is that if their particular issue or cause, be it police brutality, domestic violence, bad health, violence, black-on-black violence, infant mortality, political prisoners, whatever, if this singular issue is solved completely, will that end stolen African suffering? Is this, if this cause is solved, will Africans be able to house, clothe, medicate, educate, and defend themselves? This type of militant integrationist takes their issue, their cause as the totality of the movement. And anyone not down with their cause is somehow anti-black. To put this bluntly, these people need to know their damn role, point blank. When our African nation is more operable, these individuals maybe could be the bureau chief of the political prisoners department, or they could be the president of the anti-police brutality department. Etc. These folks could serve as essential cogs within the functioning African nation, but their causes in and of themselves are not the African nation. These causes are highly reactionary, always reacting to a pressing concern, cause, or issue. The creation of our African nation is proactive addressing issues of Africans before they become detrimental, and also attending to the general care and well-beings of Africans within their reach. So th this part is key, too. While both arms are needed, the nation-building arm must take priority. The causes and the issues arm and the nation-building arm. Where we're at right now, they should coexist. I, I, I think on the past show I, I called it the Band-Aids, the Band-Aid solution. We're, we're big on Band-Aid solutions, but we don't want to fix the whole thing. But you need people dealing with Band-Aid issues, so I'm not saying that, or causes and issues, because we got so much shit going on with us and to us that we do need folks centered on that. But we also need people who are, we need the majority of the, the African-centered, pro-black, and black nationalist camps focused on nation building and not just being cause and issue oriented. 